you know, we've been playing a trick on oncologists now for about 10 years. We, we, have, uh, we have an application for an end-of-life facility with a length of stay of 26 days with cancer patients, and we ask the oncologist to predict the survival of their patients. Um, it's fascinating because we take care of, of cancer patients from the finest programs in the world. And so we, we look at the patients and we divide the patient survival into quartiles. And then we try to match the quartile that the patient survives with the prediction that the oncologist made. In fact, uh, typically the oncologist is, is never right. So the question I have for you, does the That's oncologist <laughs> underestimate or overestimate survival? Overestimate. What do you think? And in fact, typically we'll overestimate. And overestimates now by about, uh, last year was about 250%. So six weeks survival was two weeks, six days was two days. It's fascinating. We have 12 physicians who've worked for an average of 18 years with us who do only end-of-life work. That's their specialty. It's their business. And so we did the same thing to them. How long is this patient going to live? And we, we looked at their predictions and matched them up to patient quartiles. And they never got it right. Uh, did they overestimate or underestimate? They overestimated. They overestimated by 150%. And I think what we've come to learn is that it is a tricky, it's a tricky business to take a look at an individual patient and have an idea of what a prognosis is. And we've come to understand that most of our predictions of prognosis have almost nothing to do with looking at the patient. It's fitting the patient into population data of survival, uh -huh. which makes it then very difficult because now you're talking about looking and having discussions about prognosis in very difficult situations. Take cancer, for example. The decline is significant and fairly predictable, obvious to the patient because of how the patient feels, usually obvious to the family. But you take another fatal illness, heart failure, and heart failure looks like this. I mean, you're good, you're bad, you get to the ER, you get some Lasix, you're good, you're bad, you're three days, you're good, you just don't show up the next. Eighty percent of the deaths in heart failure are sudden death. How do I have a discussion with a patient and family about a poor prognosis? That one's hard. When I can't identify the time of death because the, the method or the cause of death is unpredictable, yet I still have that obligation to give the knowledge of poor prognosis so that patient and family has the opportunity to make the decisions they want to make.